Hello, I'm John Murphy, a Technical Services Representative with McElroy. I'm going to demonstrate the proper use of a Dynamac 28 hand pump fusion machine to fuse 8-inch IPS DR11 pipe. The Dynamac hand pump series has many features that make it ideal for several applications. It is smaller and lighter than machines with an electric pump, it requires a smaller generator than other machines that fuse 2 to 8 inch pipe, yet it is still data logger compatible. This machine is a great choice for in ditch fusion and fusion jobs where there are only a few joints to make. I will be fusing in accordance with the practices outlined in ASTM F2620. This is the widely accepted standard for fusing polyethylene pipe in the US. This machine is also capable of fusing to other standards that are used throughout the world. Please be sure you understand the required standard before you begin fusing pipe. Before you begin any job, read the manual and then inspect the machine you will be using to make sure it is in proper working order and is as clean as possible. There are some additional ways the machine can be configured depending on the job site needs. The manual covers this in detail. It is a good idea to make sure that the correct size and number of inserts are installed for the pipe you will be fusing. Use a clean, dry, lint-free cloth to clean the fusion area. Make sure to clean out anything in the fusion area of the pipe that can contaminate the fusion, both inside and out. Next, load the pipe. With the pipe as level as possible, feed it into the jaws with about a finger width extending past the jaws. This will allow the pipe to extend past the jaws enough to achieve a complete face-off. Once the pipe is set into position, close the upper jaws and tighten the clamp knobs evenly to clamp the pipe. With the aid of the serrated inserts, this applies enough pressure to hold the pipe securely. Don't use a wrench on this machine, just snug it up. Now put the facer into the machine, placing the facer guide rod bracket over the back guide rod. Lock the facer latch on the front guide rod. Make sure the pipe ends aren't touching the facer and then turn the facer on. Shift the carriage control valve to close and slowly move the pump lever to bring the pipe ends against the facer. Facing requires only minimal pressure. Apply just enough pressure to allow the blades to shave ribbons of material from the pipe. If the facer begins to struggle, stop pumping. Remember that the Dynamac HP has a dual action pump. Move the lever in either direction to apply more pressure. Face all the way to the mechanical stops. This will square up the facer ensuring the best possible face off. Once facing is complete and with the jaws still against the stops, turn off the facer. Once the blades have completely stopped turning, open the carriage and remove the facer. Inspect the pipe ends to ensure at least a full ribbon of material has been removed. Bring the pipe ends together to check for proper alignment. Use a slim instrument such as a fusion pressure calculator and run it across the two pipe ends where they meet up. Avoid placing your hands between the jaws when pressure is applied. If the alignment is less than 10% of the wall thickness, we are ready to proceed. If not, adjust the high side down using the appropriate clamp knob. Never loosen the low side. If any adjustment is necessary, the pipe must be refaced. There shouldn't be any visible gaps between the pipe ends. Next, drag must be measured. Open the carriage with the pipe loaded until the pipe ends are about two inches apart. Switch the directional control valve to close and gradually increase the pressure by actuating the pump lever. Record the pressure at which the carriage begins to move. This is the drag pressure. In this case, it is 110 pounds per square inch. For the hand pump machine, it is best to calculate three pressures, the upper limit, the lower limit, and the desired gauge pressure. Please feel free to pause this video and view the fusion calculator animation if necessary. Now is a good time to check and make sure that the pipes do not slip in the jaws at the upper limit of 1,157 PSI. If they do, the pipe must be reloaded and refaced. It is just about time to heat the pipe, but before that we have to make sure that the fusion area is clean. Wipe away any debris from the jaws and pipe, but be sure not to touch the face of the pipe as it is freshly faced and as clean as it can be. Next, wipe down both sides of the heater using a clean, dry, non-synthetic, lint-free towel. Now that the heater is clean, use a pyrometer to check each side where the pipe will come in contact with the heater. ASTM specifies that the heater surface temperature must be between 400 and 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The heater's thermometer should not be used for this purpose. It tells the internal temperature of the heater and is just an indication that the heater is hot. Open the carriage just enough for the heater to fit between the pipe ends and ensure that the stripper bars fit over the upper jaws. 
With the heater at the proper temperature, place it in the carriage and let it rest on the guide rod brackets. Bring the pipe ends against the heater at fusion pressure and ensure the entire circumference of the pipe contacts the heater. Then drop the pressure to drag or below by opening the pressure release lever. Once the pressure has dropped, close the release lever and then move the carriage directional control valve to neutral. This will help prevent accidental actuation of the pump lever from affecting the carriage position or pressure during the heating cycle. As always, make sure the pipe does not pull away from the heater during the heating cycle. Dropping the pressure off of the hydraulic cylinders with the release valve begins the heat soak cycle. It is crucial that no pressure is applied between the pipe and the heater during this time and that the pipe stays in contact with the heater. Pressure applied during this cycle will force molten material out of the fusion joint which causes insufficient heated material to be fused. Failure to maintain contact with the heater causes insufficient heat soak and in either case an unacceptable cold joint will be created. The heat soak will be completed once we have reached the ASTM specified minimum 1 quarter inch bead width. For this pipe, ASTM specifies 15 seconds maximum to open the carriage, remove the heater, and bring the pipe ends together. Remember that this is a maximum. The faster we can safely do this, the better. Shift the carriage control valve to open. Open the carriage with rapid pumping and allow the stripper bar to come into contact with the jaws, stripping the heater away from the pipe ends. The heater needs to be removed without disturbing the molten material, so be sure not to bump the pipe ends while removing the heater. Once the heater is removed, quickly inspect the pipe ends to ensure a proper melt. The visual indications of a good melt are a flat and smooth surface with no unmelted areas. This is an important step. If the surface is even slightly concave, speckled, or if any of the pipe material is stuck to the heater, the fusion must be aborted. As you are completing the visual inspection, begin closing the carriage. Quickly move the carriage closed, bringing the pipe ends together. Keep pumping until the target pressure of 983 PSI is reached. Continually monitor the pressure and actuate the pump lever to maintain the fusion pressure until the fuse joint solidifies. Remember that the calculated ideal fusion pressure is 983 PSI, but we cannot exceed 1157 PSI nor drop below 808 PSI. Allow the joint to cool under fusion pressure. The pressure may continue to bleed off slightly during the cool down period, so it is important to maintain the fusion pressure by pumping periodically. The joint is now in the cooling process. ASTM F2620 specifies a minimum cooling time of 11 minutes per inch of pipe wall thickness. To calculate the cooling time, either measure the pipe wall thickness or divide the actual diameter of the pipe by the dimensional ratio, or DR, to calculate the wall thickness. 8 inch IPS pipe has an outside diameter of 8.63 inches. Divide this by the DR value of the pipe, 11 in this case, to get the actual nominal wall thickness. 8 inch IPS DR11 pipe has a wall thickness of 0.785 inches. Multiply that number by 11 to get a minimum cooling time of 8.63 minutes, which can be converted to 8 minutes and 38 seconds. Once the cooling cycle has completed, shift the carriage control valve to neutral, loosen the clamp knobs, open the jaws and remove the pipe. The last step is to inspect the joint. A good joint will have a uniform appearance on each side and a double bead rolled all the way back to the pipe surface. Check for any debris or pitting in the joint. If all is well, proceed to the next joint. If you notice anything outside the normal parameters, cut the joint out and start over. Remember, when in doubt, cut it out. So as you can see, fusing with the Dynamac HP is not difficult at all. Just remember that it is very important to follow the steps outlined in this video to help ensure your fusion is up to par. I hope this video gave you a little more insight into butt fusing with the McElroy Dynamac hand pump machine. Please be sure to check out McElroy's many other videos to help with all your fusion needs. Go to www.mcelroy.com fusion to find additional information including fusion pressure calculators, animations, charts, and other reference materials.